telling the truth. That is the topic of tonight's byline. The truth, it really is a simple concept. Unfortunately, in our world, it's in short supply. We all talk about the truth. We ask our children, are you telling me the truth? And we, you know, when we catch them saying, no, no, I didn't have anything to do with the cookie jar falling from the counter to the, the kitchen floor. In court, we promise to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. It's that last part that fascinates me, the whole truth. Because as we talked about last night, you're given some facts and all those facts, some of the facts, well, might lead to different conclusions. If you don't have all the facts, some facts might lead you in one direction instead of another. I said last night the media isn't telling you the truth, and the reality is they're not telling you the whole truth. In theological terms, you, you might be describing it as a sin of omission. See, with sin, you can be guilty of something you did, a, a sin of commission, or something you didn't do, the sin of omission, like you omitted part of the truth. Chief Teresa Spend of Attawapiskat wants a meeting with the Prime Minister. That's all she wants! When uh, a leader from a desperately poor community says, all we're asking for is a meeting, not just, she's not asking for him to come here, she's uh -huh. saying meet with our nationally elected leaders. And we have a Prime Minister who doesn't do that. He's setting a precedent, and it's a precedent that isn't Canadian at Good. all. Hmm, all she wants is a meeting, Charlie. We know that's not true. She wants a summit of a week or two, and she wants it with the Crown, meaning the Queen or the Governor General, because she spent, sees herself as equal to the Prime Minister and her people as a sovereign people. So she wants a nation-to-nation -nation negotiation, and that requires the heads of state of those two nations, herself and the Governor General present. As I described last night, and please go watch the video, it's posted on the blog, Chief Spence sees herself and her people as sovereign and separate from Canada. Now, that's a bit odd since they're dependent on the government. It's a bit like my kids claiming to, uh, they're going to stand tall and be equal to dad. And they're going to tell me, oh, you've got no say, no sway over me. Meanwhile, I'm paying the bills. Here's the truth. My kids are my dependents. Attawapiskat is dependent on the federal government and the government of Ontario. They're not independent. Yet we've got left-wing pundits going on CBC calling for nation-to-nations meeting as if they are equal countries on equal footings. I, I can't understand how the communications masters within the Conservative Party haven't used this as a catalyst to have a nation-to-nation -nation meeting with First Nations people and say, listen, Absolutely. we acquiesce to your demand, we're just going to do it, and then the we're going to move forward. Show, show some, some, show some, some decency at Christmas leadership. time. A leadership. woman is starving. Uh, show some five, humility okay. and decency. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Hmm, a woman starving. That was Rob Silver. He's a liberal strategist. Woman starving? No, a woman's eating a lot of soup. Now, Ian Capstick, the first guy you saw there, he's no fool. He knows that Attawapiskat and most of the groups and people taking part in I don't know more are not, well, they're in some way dependent on the government. They're not independent people, so they're not independent nations. That doesn't matter, though. In Capstick's left wing worldview, one shared by most of the media, this is about increasing native power, taking on the Harper government. Now, when the media bothers to tell you that this is about more than a meeting, they might tell you that Chief Spence and the rest of the people at Idle No More, well, they're opposed to Bill C-45, whatever that is, because most of the time they don't tell you. Well, I will. It's the omnibus budget bill. Why all the protests? Well, here's where omission and outright lies connect. Either you won't be told what the bill is, you won't be told what its alleged problems are, or at this point you might be told outright lies, like it removes all protection for waterways, lakes, rivers, and then it makes it easy to sell off reserve land. Both are untrue. Now, if you're on Facebook, maybe a little while ago, you noticed the campaign it was late in the year saying, thanks to the Harper government, most of Canada's river and lakes are no longer environmentally protected. That's the same claim being made by a lot of the people surrounding Idle No More. The bill, Bill C-45, makes changes to the navigable, navigable Waters Act, and it removes some requirements for smaller lakes and rivers that don't really qualify as navigable, meaning you can't sail from one lake to another and on through another through the lake system. There's still environmentally, uh, environmental protections, the Environmental Protection Act, let's say, for example. There are still provincial laws that protect these lakes, these rivers, these waterways. This does not mean you can pollute water. It will. The second big lie is that Harper is trying to sell off reserve lands. Well, first of all, he doesn't own them, so he can't. What Bill C-45 did, and it did so at the request of several successful bans, is that it 
it's now easier for the bands themselves to determine if and how they want to lease their land. Did you get that? It makes it easier for them to lease their land to others outside of the band if they want to do it. See, some bands have developed shopping centers, business parks, hotels, other commercial ventures on their land, and they are successful. It provides jobs for their people. But they said it was too difficult to do business with non-natives due to the existing rules. Well, this helps reserves that want to get into business and do it on their own terms. No one's selling their land. That's the truth. That's what we deal in here. And that's the byline. Our government held a historic meeting with 800 chiefs this year um, to listen to chiefs firsthand what the issues were. The prime minister attended, I attended, a number of my colleagues attended. That was histo a historic meeting with all chiefs of Canada. Through that process, a number of recommendations were made, and those recommendations were given to our government to, to, to respond to, and we are doing that. Former Conservative Cabinet Minister, now Sun News commentator, columnist, and all-around great guy, Monty Salberg, joins us now out of Calgary. And Monty, um, let's put this on the table off the top. No doubt that there are problems uh, with Canada's Native communities, but this, isn't, this campaign uh, and, and the media support around it, the public support it's generating, it's not going to solve those problems, is it? No, it's not. In fact, uh, it leads people down the wrong path, in my view. Uh, consultation is appropriate in some cases, but in a lot of cases, we know what the problems are. We need to act on them. And the government did offer people on reserve a lot of tools in the last budget to go ahead and do those things. You're absolutely right, Brian. A lot of successful bands are doing just fine. Thank you very much. It's not because they had more consultation. It's because they've got some serious leadership and they've done some good things. Uh, you, from the days when the government, uh, the Harper government started, they've moved on a number of fronts. You, you were part of that government for, for a few years. Uh, yeah. But they, they've uh, settled more land claims that were just languishing. Uh, they've brought uh, spousal protection to uh, First Nations women. They've passed laws on drinking water. They have pumped tons of money. I mean, just check out what they've given to Attawapiskat. And yet, there is still this perception saying, Harper doesn't care about natives. Is that something that can ever be changed? Or does the PM just have to say, work with people that want to work on solving solutions to real problems? Well, the facts matter to reasonable people. There's no question that some people will hate the government no matter what the facts are because that, that's just their cast of mind. But I think in this case, we do need to make the point that many Aboriginal bands called for a lot of the measures that were in the actual budget bill. They wanted to uh, be able to go ahead and develop like the West Bank band in Kelowna who have done extraordinarily well by developing on their lands, uh, using property to lease to other people, uh, typically from Kelowna, people who want to have a place to go to in the summer. They've done extraordinarily well, and uh, that's the kind of thing we should be promoting, not uh, pretending that, you know, more consultation is somehow going to fix problems for, pe for bands well, that already have very weak leadership. So I've got about 30 seconds for this answer. Uh, it you listen to the people that died on the moor and Chief Spence, and they say that they want consultation on all laws, but they also say that they're all independent nations. Uh, what would that do to lawmaking in Canada if the government treated these people the way they wanted to be treated? It would grind to a halt. Uh, those people also have the ability to elect uh, members of parliament who are consulted on these things. They vote on them. They go to committee. That's the way to deal with this, not pass every law through a consultation process with aboriginals in Canada. Everything would grind to a halt. All right, Monty, thanks so much for uh, joining us, bringing some sanity to this issue. We'll talk to you again soon, my friend. Thanks very much, Brian. Take care. Email me your thoughts, byline at sunmedia.ca. More to come.